Hello you guys, so I'm Daruna, taking you through the story for A-Level Physics Paper 2. And this video is going to go through the potential divider rule in electrical circuits. So this is under ele current electricity and is suitable for students in both Senior 5 and Senior 6 offering physics as part of their combination. So before we start, let's first look at the course outline of this paper. Now, physics paper 2 is divided into four parts. The first part is geometrical optics, where two questions come from these topics and a student must answer one. Next is physical optics, or what we call waves, where two questions come from these topics and a student must answer one. The third one is electrostatics and electricity, where three questions come from these topics and magnetism and SC, where three questions come from these topics. So a student, you can choose to answer two from here and one from here to make the five questions or you answer one from here and two from here to make to still make the five questions. Any of the two options is okay. So previously we saw arrangement of resistors in circuits. Now we are going to the part of potential divider rule in circuits. So here we are concerned with calculations but full notes are available in the book called Mastering A-Level Physics Paper 2. It has notes, worked examples and try questions on all the parts of physics paper 2. But to be safe if you are stud a student of physics you will need three books. So one will be of physics paper 1, Mastering A-Level Physics Paper 1, now I'm asking a office paper 2 and a Neb topical question bank. So these three books are needed for those doing physics at a level. Then for those doing math at a level, principal math, you need mastering a level math bar 1, mastering a level math bar 2, and the topical question bank. Then for those doing subsidiary math at a level, you need only one book and that would be Mastering A level subsidiary mathematics paper one. Remember, submath has only one paper. Then the rest are all for all level. This is all level physics, all level physics, and all level math. So now we shall start our topic of potential divider rule in electrical circuits. So this rule applies to resistors connected in series. So now we know arrangement of resistors in series. So this rule is used for resistors in series because resistors in series have different PD. The potential divider rule provides a convenient way of obtaining a variable PD from a fixed PD. So it's a short form when dealing with calculations and we shall see how it is used so we shall consider two or more resistors in series with a fixed it considers two or more resistors in series with a fixed PD so we shall see what the segment means in the diagram so to derive the potential divider rule we shall consider two resistors of resistances this and this connected in series with a fixed voltage V total as shown below. So there are two ways of drawing it. One is by using a slider. So we shall draw both diagrams. Now this will be the fixed PD. And this is the resistance but has a slider. And this slider is what divides the two is what divide, divides this total resistance into two resistors. That means that this one will have a PD and this one also have a PD. This one will have a PD VAB and this one a PD VBC. So this is one way of drawing it. Another way is when you have two separate resistors. For example, this is RAB and this is RABC separate. So still here you can also use a potential divider rule. So potential divider rule is used when there is a slider or when there are resistors in series. So 
So we are coming to the since resistors are in series, total resistance is given by adding the two. Also, total fixed PD is V total, and is given by the by adding the individual PDs VAB and VBC. Now from Ohm's law, the current I flowing through the circuit it will be given by total PD over total resistance. So we know that for series arrangement, current flowing through all the resistors is the same as that flowing through one of the individual resistors. So it is implies that from Ohm's law, if I pick out the current flowing through RAB, I'll, I'll use VAB equal to I RAB. But I, the good thing I already know I is equal to this. So what I will do, I will come here and substitute for I to come up with this. Then rearrange, bring this one this side and take this one outside to come up with this. And that is what we call the potential divider rule. How does it state? It states that the PD across a certain resistor is equal to the ratio of the resistance of that resistor to the total resistance. Everything multiplied by the total fixed PD provided that the resistors are in series. So PD across AB is equal to is equal to the resistance in, from A to B over the total resistance, everything multiplied by the total PD. So that's, that's what we call potential divider rule. In words, you can write in words in this form, is equal to this over this times that. Therefore, from this rule, it implies that VAB is equal to RAB over the total multiplied by the V total. O and also VBC is equal to RBC over the total resistance multiplied by the total PD. So that is what may basically what they call potential divider rule. Its work is to simplify the calculation. So by now, so because of this potential divider rule, we can easily get the PD across a certain portion without getting current first. So that is why it is called a shortcut. Okay, so question one came from your neighbor, 1996 part two, question eight B and says, a 12 volt battery is connected across a potential divider of resistance 600 ohm as shown if a load if a load of 100 ohm is connected across the terminals of a and c when the slider is halfway up the divider find the pd across the load and to the pd across sc a and c when the load is removed so now here they told us that the slider is halfway up what does that mean it means that it is going to divide this into two 600 ohms will go here and 600 ohms will go here and this the one which is here will be in parallel with this because here when you come here current divides one goes this side another on this side So you are coming and say that RSC is equal to RBC, which is half RAB. I think we have seen that because current is halfway. Therefore, each will be 300 ohm. Now combining RSC with 100 ohm, remember they are in parallel. It will be product over sum to give you 75 ohms. Mm -hmm. So now PD across the parallel combination will be by divider rule will be the resistance up, resistance between A and C over the total resistance 
everything multiplied by the total PD. So resistance across the power combination is 75 over the total which is 75 plus 300. Now where is that coming from? If you go here, so in this this case, these two have been combined into one to give you one ohm, one 75 ohms. But there's also that 300 here of BC. So when I combine the two resistance, it will be this plus that. Okay, so everything multiplied by the total PD, which is that, to give you 2.4 volt. So then you can see how potential divider rule works. You don't need to first get the current. So PD across the load is 2.4 volt because they are in parallel, meaning they have the same PD. Then Roman 2. Roman 2, they want PD across AC when the load is removed. So when this is removed, they want PD across this. When it is removed, the PD across S, the resistance across AC will just be 300 ohm. So when the load is removed, PD across AC is RAC over the total resistance multiplied by the total PD. So RAC is 300, RABC is also 300, so the total will be 300 plus 300. More everything multiplied by the total PD to give you 12, to give you 6 volt. And that's what they wanted. Then question 2 came from UNEB 1999, paper 2, question 8b and says, a DC source of EMF 6 volt and negligible internal resistance is connected in series with two resistors of 400 ohm and R ohm respectively. When the voltmeter is connected across the 400 ohm, it reads 4 volt, while it reads 6 volt when connected across R ohm. Find Roman 1 the resistance of the voltmeter and Roman 2, the value of R. So this one needs a sketch of the circuit. So when the voltmeter is connected across 400 ohm, we shall come up with that circuit. So you have two resistors in series, so one the voltmeter is connected across the 400 ohm and it will read 4 volt, the total PD is 16 volt. So let RV be the resistance of the voltmeter. So this means that now here these two resistors will be in parallel. So combine those two resistors in parallel, which will come up with product of a sum. And that will, the effective resistance will be R1. So when I combine these two, I'll come up with R1. Therefore, the voltmeter reading will be, by potential divider rule, it will be R, this R1 over the total resistance multiplied by the total PD. So I already know that total PD here is 4, total PD is 16. These ones, I don't know them yet, so I'll leave them there. So when I cross multiply, first of all, this one and this one cancels. This remains with 1 and this remains with 4. Then when I cross multiply, the whole of this one goes this side. Multiply with 1 to give you this. And also, this one multiplies with this 4 which remained here to give you this. That means that R1 will be 1 over 3R. So I have equation 1, I have equation 2. So equating equations 1 and 2, because they are all equal to R1, I'll come up with this. Then make R the subject, I'll come up with that. So I brought this on this side. And that is equation 3. 
Now that was when the voltmeter was connected across the 400 ohm. What about when it is connected across the R ohm? So the circuit will become like this. Okay. So in this case, the voltmeter reading will read 6 volt. So what does that mean? It means that R V and this are in parallel. So combine the two resistors in parallel, I'll come up with that. Try it over some, then the new voltmeter reading will be got by potential divider rule. This will be 6, this is 16. So well, now I have only one unknown, so the next thing is to look for a way of making it the subject. So what I'm going to do, bring this 16 this side. So 6 over 16 gives you 0 0.375. Then take also this one, this side, to give you 0 0.375 times, in brackets, 400 plus R2. This side I'll only remain with R2. Okay. The next is to is to take this R, uh, this side. So how do I do that? I will say, remember when I open brackets here, it will be this times this to give you 150 plus this times this to give you 0 0.375 R2. Now R2 minus 0 0.375 R2 gives you 0 0.625 R2. Then make R2 the subject to give you this as the answer. So now I've got R2 I've got this R2 which is here. Therefore, from equation 5, I'll come and see that substitute for R2 and look for. So, when I, after substituting, I'll get this one and cross multiply to give you this equal to this. Then, substituting equation 3 and 3 in 5 gives. Now equation 3, let's see how equation 3 was. This was equation 3, it was R in terms of RV, but remember they want RV so I come and substitute for R. To give you an equation which has only RV. So now RV is the only unknown, meaning that I have to look for a way of making RV the subject. So first this and this gives you R of squared. Then this one, when it goes this side, it will be this divided by this to give you 5. That's where this 5 is coming from. This one remains. This one already showed you to went here to give you this R of squared. Then here I'll have LCM for this one in box bracket. LCM will be this, which is here. Then this LCM divided by this one gives you 1 times this to give you what this very one. Then also this, this is like over 1. So this LCM divided by this gives you this very 1 times this to give you that part. Then this and this can cancel. And when they cancel, this one, when I open this bracket, I'll come up with 400 RV plus 1200 RV to give you 1600 RV. Then this times this gives you RV squared. Then take this one this side to give you 4 RV squared is equal to 1600 RV. So when I divide, 1 RV will cancel to remain with 4 RV equal to 1600. Then again, divide by 4 to give you 400 ohms. So RV is equal to 400 ohms. That was Roman 1. What about Roman 2? Roman 2, they wanted the value of R. So after getting RV, you can easily get R. Because you know that R is equal to this.
So I'll come and write that equation, then substitute. Okay, any of the two, I can say R equal to, I can use the other one, or any of the two. So I already know R2, so I can get R2 here, and also substitute for RV, and make R uh, the subject. That is one way. Another person could also use what we saw here. Another person could use this equation 3 because this is R what they want and I already know R V. So also you get the same answer. Then question 3 came from your 1994 paper 2 question 8b. It is added meaning some of the things were adjusted. For example, here there was Roman 4 but it was removed because it involved getting power which we have not yet covered. So it says the in the circuit in the circuit in figure below voltmeter V has resistance 400 ohm so this one has a resistance of 400 Roman 1 find the reading of the voltmeter and Roman 2 what would be the reading obtain what would be the voltage obtained if the voltmeter was replaced by a cathode ray oscilloscope this cathode ray oscilloscope is covered in details in physics paper 1 and uh, modern physics then Roman 3 explain the difference between the voltages between obtained in Roman 1 and Roman 2 above so first of all this is 400 ohms it means that these two are in parallel So, I'll come and redraw and put the 400 there on the voltmeter. And this voltage or voltmeter reading which is not known. So when I combine this and this which are in parallel, I'll use special case product over sum to give me this as the combined resistance. Therefore, the voltmeter reading, I'll use the potential divider rule, whereby I have to get this resistance over the total. Total will be this plus this plus this, which is here, multiplied by the total PD, which is this. So when I substitute, I'll come up with 2 volt as the voltmeter reading. So I think you can see that we are bypassing the part of first getting current because previously in the first video, for you to get this PD, you are supposed to first get the current. But now we don't need the current, we just use the knowledge of potential divider rule to get it using a shortcut. So that was Roman 1. Roman 2... Roman 2 says, what would be the voltage obtained? if the voltmeter was replaced by a cathode ray oscilloscope. Now when they replace the cathode ray oscilloscope, what does it mean? So it means that, first of all, a cathode ray oscilloscope it has a negligibly small resistance or infinite resistance. So the circuit will have resistors in series. So that resistance will be zero. Instead of having 400, ohms as the resistance it will be zero so in other words it will be neglected to just be put out of the circuit so if i put it out of the circuit i'm going to remain with only this resistor this resistor and this resistor those will be the res resistors in series Therefore, still voltage obtained, I'll use potential divide the rule, R3 over the total resistors multiplied by the total PD to give you this. And that's what they wanted. Then Roman 3 says, explain the difference between the voltages obtained in Roman 1 and Roman 2 
above. So here we are coming to the shunt resistance of the oscilloscope is negligibly small. And hence the net resistance of power combination increases from 8. Remember in Roman 1, the resistance of those two resistors, 100 and 400, was 8 ohms. But now when they, when they put a re an oscilloscope, we eliminate the resistance of the voltmeter and, re and therefore the resistance in power combination will, will remain 100 ohm. What does that mean? It means that since V is equal to IR, the voltmeter reading increases. So that explains the difference between the two voltmeter readings. Alternatively, you can say a CRO or a cathode ray oscilloscope has infinite resistance, implying that no current will pass through it. Therefore, the resistors will be like resistors in series. A slightly bigger current will pass through the 100 ohm resistor compared when there is a voltmeter, hence a bigger voltage. So that also accounts for the difference in the two voltmeter readings. So that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching and be reminded the next video will be on resistivity and temperature coefficient of resistance. So if you have not yet subscribed, please click on the subscribe button below this video so that you can receive updates when the next video has been uploaded. And also, if you know of any student who is not yet on this platform, please share the link of this video with them via social media platforms like Facebook and WhatsApp. Say so that you can all benefit us a family.